So I have reported just recently on what exactly is going on with hydrogen trucks. Most of the industry has worked out that no, they are not the future. This has been a bit of a trend lately. That people think, yeah, hydrogen won't work with cars, but trucks it'll work. But actually, industry is not agreeing with that perception. In fact, much of the industry is saying the opposite. They're saying, yeah, you can say that, but actually we're going to invest in electric trucks. And now Cummins has got on board investing $7 billion in an electric truck future. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. I'm coming to you here from Melbourne, Australia. Welcome to the new subscribers to the channel. Welcome back to everyone else. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. Really appreciate what you do. I'll put a link in the description below to our Patreon page. Simon Alvarez from Tesserata reports that it seems like one of the most notable vanguards of diesel engines has begun preparations for an upcoming Tesla-like disruption in the trucking sector. And realistically, I agree. I have probably read 50 different articles over the past two months alone of different companies getting into the electric truck market. It is happening every single day. But how many companies are getting into hydrogen trucks? Well, Nicholas say they're going to build one. And there's a couple of others. But realistically, all the big money and all the talk and all the actual real things that are going on are moving towards showing the future of trucks is not hydrogen. The future of trucks is electric. In a recent press release, diesel engine giant Cummins announced that it was acquiring Meritor, a company that makes drivetrain mobility braking aftermarket and electric powertrain solutions for commercial vehicles and industrial markets. The deal is valued at 3.7 billion US dollars. With the Meritor deal in place, Cummins will be able to add transmissions, brakes and axles to its own line of electric motors. This would allow the company to offer electric trucks manufacturers the option to source their drivetrain from Cummins. This is a familiar ground for the diesel engine giant. In the US, customers have the option of acquiring a truck from a manufacturer like Freightliner while specifying a diesel engine from a company like Cummins. But Cummins sees the writing on the wall. I think this is a smart move, very, very smart pivot from Cummins to say, yeah, you know what? We're very good at making these diesel engines and truth be told, they are. Cummins diesel engines are some of the best engines period in the world. I mean, really, there's a huge amount of respect for Cummins diesel engines and there's a huge amount of credit in the industry to Cummins as a brand when it comes to diesel engines. Personally, I have a very high regard for them. And so I've got a lot of respect for Cummins to say, you know what, we've got to pivot. We have to, we make great diesel engines, but you know what? It's not gonna be long now before people just don't want them. So what are we going to do? I mean, 3.7 billion US dollars. I mean, that's not all they're spending. They're spending more than that on other electric electrification plans, but that's just for acquiring this new electric brand. And I think this is a really good move. Obviously, they have to do it. They were kind of forced to do it. But at the same time, they could do what the Japanese car makers are doing and just kind of pretend that it's not happening, but they're not. Cummins noted that its acquisition of Meritor would allow the company to accelerate the ramp of its new power business which involves the development of motors and axles for trucks that are powered by electric and hybrid powertrains. In the company's press release, Cummins chairman and CEO Tom Linebarger explained that Meritor's acquisition places the diesel engine maker in a favorable position. The acquisition of Meritor is an important milestone for Cummins. Meritor is an industry leader and the addition of their complementary strengths will help us address one of the most critical technology challenges of our age, developing economically viable zero carbon solutions for commercial and industrial applications. Climate change is the existential crisis of our time. And this acquisition accelerates our ability to address it. Our customers need economically viable, decarbonized solutions, Linebar just said. Personally, I don't believe any of that at all. I mean, I do believe it, but I don't believe he's being genuine about Cummins' attempts to avert and stop climate change. I think that's just something he is, um, the marketing team, his PR department wrote up for him to say that they thought would sound good. And I don't think any of that was necessary, to be honest. I think the reality is for them economically, they're not going to exist in 10, 15 years time unless they do this now. They had no choice. I think it would have been better for the company just to say, you know what? We had to pivot. The world's going to electric trucks. We're moving with it. We're moving with the times. The other stuff, while it's true, I don't see, I don't see any like 
honesty in that. I think they're just saying that to sound good. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Sam Cummins invests $3.7 billion in this upcoming truck, electric truck market, but is well for the upcoming segment, which is arguably still in its very early stages. And that's true, it is. Even EV leaders like Tesla are seeing challenges in entering the truck market. The Tesla Semi, for example, has become one of the company's most delayed products in its history, with the Class 8 truck initially scheduled to start deliveries back in 2019. Elon Musk has explained that the semi's delays are partly due to battery supply. I think, realistically, Tesla need 4680 cells to make the Tesla Semi work, and they just don't have enough right now. They don't have enough and probably won't for a couple of years, in my view. Why is that? Well, the reason for that is I think Tesla didn't expect the kind of demand they have for the Tesla Model Y right now. And maybe the 4680 cells took them a little bit longer to ramp up than what they expected. Realistically, though, what will happen is that now companies like BYD, Volvo, many other companies are already building electric trucks. Of course, the Tesla Semi will have a huge market as well. Companies will want that vehicle. It could potentially have unparalleled range. I don't know exactly. We'll see the specifications at some point. But by 2026, 2027, no one will be buying ICE trucks, internal combustion engine vehicles, trucks. They won't be buying them, period. Why? It all comes down to money, right? If you're running a trucking company and you're literally paying $2 per litre or whatever, whatever you guys pay in the US and Europe, I know it's expensive in Europe, even more expensive than here in Australia. For fuel, that is going to cost you probably three to four times more than what it will to run an electric truck. In addition to that, I mean, think about it, right? Battery technology has come so far now. You're going to probably get a million miles, or at least a million kilometers out of a battery pack in an electric truck. How many do you get out of an engine? It's nowhere near that. Nowhere near. Think of the simplicity of a truck. Think of the cost benefit to a business. Even if the cost benefit was only 10%, it would still be a no-brainer. But the reality is the cost benefit is going to be closer to 50%, even potentially more than that. So if you're a trucking company, you just won't be able to compete if you're running internal combustion engine trucks. This is going to happen way, 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 way quicker than people realize. The trucking market will see a rapid adoption of electric vehicles, says Simon from Tesorati. I agree with you, Simon. Fleet owners typically view truck purchases based on the total cost of ownership, he says, which could be favorable to vehicles like the Tesla Semi and Cummins's upcoming electric products. Once it becomes evident that electric trucks, total cost of ownership is much lower than that of diesel trucks, customers will switch over to electric solutions very, very quickly. When it does, it would likely be companies like Tesla, Cummins, and other electric trucking companies that will be ready to take advantage of the emerging electric trucking market. And this is one area that I think people are discounting. If you're looking at a company, you need to consider what their future entails. What are they working on? What products are they working on? What is that potential market? The market for electric trucks is enormous, whether that's Cummins, Tesla, BYD, whoever it is, their market share, the number of vehicles they sell, their revenue and profit is going to dramatically increase by virtue of the fact that they're focusing on that market. Companies such as a company that I used to work at who build, well, not electric trucks, they will be struggling. They may even be bankrupt by 2030. This is good for Cummins. You know what? They had to choose to either sink or swim. So I'm very pleased to see that they decided to learn how to swim before it was too late. Let me know what you think below. In the comment section below, do you agree with me that electric trucks will become mainstream by 2026? Do you think that it's unlikely that a company is going to want to buy diesel-powered truck by 2026? I don't think it is, but let me know if you agree with me in the comment section below.